I don't think I'm tripping when I say this, but I think Celtics done heard people talking about how they soft, they don't got no dogs on their team, they give up leads, um, they they mm-hmm. front runners. They, I could tell how they came out. They wanted to be like they made sure they were the aggressors first, like they attacked first. And it seemed like Maris yeah. like was caught off guard, and they were just playing defense the rest of the game. Hmm. Like they were just defending enough to make sure, like okay, we don't get thirty piece in here. But the whole like it just like the whole game. Um, Boston was just blitzing. It was like, bro, we not we don't we not we not trying to play. We not trying to be on on the defense this game. We trying to just go all out on offense. And it felt it like, like they was just like, uh, you ever seen a college team like Kentucky and they play somebody like mm-hmm. Middle Tennessee State? And you like, man, it's an athletic gap. It's a skill gap. It kind of looked like that, like for a majority of that first half, bro. It just looked like Boston had five stars and Dallas had one five star and the rest of these dudes is three stars. So that's that's what that's the kind of vibe I got from it. Like when uh, Kentucky go up against somebody like Akron, <laughs> just for that first half, because he got it got nasty, bro. And uh, Chris, I I, I want to hear your take. What, what what you got to say about Game One? Just your honest. Opinion. I'm not gonna overreact or nothing. I mean, it was a beat down. Uh, in that sense, Celtics hit a lot of shots. They Celtics ran their game to a T. They knew exactly what they wanted to do: space the floor, hit corner threes, uh, prevent Mavericks from hitting corner threes, prevent Mavericks from hitting threes in general, um, shutting down the others. Um, there's a lot of ba- uh, bad things that happen in this game, but in my opinion, I'm not worried. The matter has been blown out a couple times in game one, this playoff series. So this ain't nothing that's going to just scare me or have me have the Celtics fans over here throwing parade already. I just, that's not how I'm going to be. I'm not going to ready to just give say right. Mavericks going to lose in four or five. It was bad. Yes. Uh, I said that they was going to lose. Honestly, Chris was like, yeah, I think they'll get, I was like, I don't know if they will. So, I wasn't necessarily <laughs> surprised. I was maybe surprised with the way it happened because the way they jumped out to that 30 point lead, I'm like, dude, what, what, what's going on? But I, I think, yeah. I think this was kind of necessary for the fans, not even just the Mavericks fans, but just people that's been watching the Mavericks and thinking, I, I, I had no idea why most people were favoring the Mavericks. Even on the poll I posted, most people was favoring the Mavericks. I'm like, bro, I get it. Boston run to the finals was not impressive. It was not that exciting. You know, even they only lost two games, and even those two games they lost was disappointing. That's how high the bar was for this team. So it's like they won 64 games, and the only thing that mattered this whole season, this is the only thing that matters, the finals. I didn't care about Boston till they got to this point right here right now. You think they're not feeling that? You think they didn't know that? Like Ray said, yeah. they came out like this is the finals. They whole season was leading up to this. Nothing mattered. That 64 games they won didn't matter. That 14 and 2, 13 and 2 in the playoffs, that didn't matter. They mm-hmm. real season started right now. It started in the finals and they played like yeah. it. Because we yeah, all yeah. can say nobody cared about the Celtics until this very this very game. And they came out and they looked like the Boston that everybody thought they should be. And my biggest thing was this felt like Luca's the most empty stat game I've ever seen from Luca because uh he got his thirty uh, okay. but it felt like an empty in, in, empty stats game he tried but it was just me, like, pers- me personally I think Luca could have been more aggressive I really do especially, <laughs> in, that first, especially in that first quarter yeah yeah there's plenty of times where he getting in the lane. And he's not looking to shoot. He's looking to pass out or lob or kick out. Or, like, he just didn't attack, as, to me, or find out early on in that game. And he's too relying too much on others, not getting shots. And, and the Celtics were playing. That played right into the Celtics' hand because they didn't want anybody else really doing nothing but Luka. They said if Luka goes for 60 
and beat us, great. But they wasn't letting uh, Kyrie go off. They wouldn't let PJ go off. They wouldn't let Derrick Jones Jr. You know, hit threes. They forcing him to drive. Like I didn't like Luca's game plan. I didn't like him getting the switches on the bigs. Porzingis and Al Horford, not the switch I want. I want Derek White. I want Peyton Pritchard. I want Sam Hauser. Any mm. because at some point them is gonna be the guys that's gonna be on the court. The big switches was cool for the, the Timberwolves series and for probably the Clipper series, but that's not that's not Al Horford did a damn good job on Luca and Kyrie at certain times. He got embarrassed sometimes too. But man, if you, he hold if up more game, than a lot of people. I'm comfortable with going up. Uh, I'm comfortable with attacking Hal Horford. He had a good game or whatever, decent game last time, but I'm still comfortable because he was getting cooked by Nimhar last game, last series. But Chris, so, you got to understand the thing. This is why Al Horford does could do better on Luca than a Nimhar. Luca ain't quick. Al Horford probably, bro. It's the speed thing. <laughs> Like Luca needs to go find a size advantage because he don't got no speed advantage, or he can't. He really can't get past Al Horford like that. He can mix them up and get this step. The defense player of the year. I was going. Yeah, that's why I'm saying he Luca was hitting, just missing some of his jump shots, outside shots, stuff like that. Yes, he's not going to be able to blow by Al Horford, but he's going to be able to beat him in other ways. And those ways that yeah, I say. I'm saying like why say that's fine. Picking on somebody they can. Kind of, I'm okay. Luca's a great player. Of course, he go get his on Al Horford, but it's gonna be a lot of times where Al Horford holds up. I'm saying Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, and Derek White should never be able to handle you. Just like when Drew went to the post against uh Halliburton and Nimhard, he's gonna have to do some of those things against the smaller guards. Went to the post on PJ Washington. Yeah, yeah, that was nasty too. But y'all see what I I'm think, saying? I, Luke, I think it, ahead, I think right? it's more so too also because. Drew got an old school point guard play style when he in the post. Like it's a lot of a, a lot of young guys have they never had to guard a strong point guard who can back you down. So I don't yeah. think PJ even knew how to even guard that from a, a, a guard. I don't even think he even had the. He probably was like he ain't about to go with this. He ain't got the audacity. I'm like, bro, he is literally had you backed up under the basket. <laughs> I think he is about to go with it. Okay, let let let's rank who who played the best for Boston. Number one, I think I got Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, because he nah, said Jalen Brown. Porzingis set the tone, Przingis, but I think Jalen Brown. Have, they don't even they they that all that how Boston came out aggressive don't even matter. Porzingis don't have the game he had. That first half. He, he, that first half, but Jalen Brown had the best all round game in my opinion. Yeah, that, I get what you're saying, Ray, because he did set the tone. Oh, we not. Oh, I feel we like gonna act, we're gonna act like Porzingis and open up the whole court for Jalen no, Brown to even have it. We're gonna act no, like they but, as good as Jalen Brown was. They were still double teaming and triple teaming Tatum only, and Porzingis was hitting crazy. Like, I, man, people, that was. I, no, Brown, yeah, he got to go out there and make his shots. Don't get me wrong. But they, I can tell every. I don't care who plays the Celtics. They're going to always double team Tatum when both of them on the court. So that means Jalen Brown. If I'm getting double, that means you have an advantage in a one on one. Every time, you better go off. I'm, I'm thinking if more of his to, just intensity in that third quarter when Mary's did go in their room. You say you done got snuffed from all NBA. You better show them why you like. It's no reason why you should be getting going. And he did. On he did good. No, I'm saying, he showed. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that's on both that's, ends. That's, that's the bare minimum. I'm saying he's supposed on to go both on. ends. Nah, Porzingis supposed to do what he did too. It's just we haven't seen him, so said, we. Look, man, they had it was it was times where they had Jaden Hardy on him, like he hit and they <laughs> yeah. get him and get him in the switch. You supposed to be able to shoot over them and hit that. That's you basically being guarded by nobody. He man, that dude was when they was shooting. That dude was doing unnecessary. He that had dude Josh Green on him a couple of plays. I'm sitting there like you supposed to be making these, man. That's He's throwing in seven three Jayden. elbows in people's face. <laughs> And ref ain't no, doing nothing on, but letting man. them play. Play on, play on, man. That, get that, that out. That dude. Porzingis definitely was the best player in the first half. The only thing I hate about this new era of basketball is they be trying to sell too many fouls. They not gonna call that. Just to call <laughs> I, that. Yeah, they not calling blocks. <laughs> when Jaden Hardy did that, I was like, dude. 
<laughs> I know they wasn't finna call that. I'm like, you not going This nigga Jaden Hardy was playing at the end of the game. Like, he, he finna bring the man respect. That boy was trying to get every ISO. That boy was trying to get step backs. I'm like, bro, he's wired to score. I'll give him that. He was out there like they wasn't down 30. <laughs> Most times people get in that situation, they get the passing the ball around. That boy Jay Hart, he was like, nah, we finna come back. No, nah, he said, hey, some of y'all dudes out here don't even get no PT. You ain't getting the ball at all. You out here just to break a sweat. <laughs> anyway, t- hey man. Oh, uh I guess we, we talked about the Celtics. I think Derek White had a lot of good moments. Like them catch and shoot threes in that first quarter. Like it was like he hit every dagger to like kind of separate them in that first quarter because like they so left them open. Yeah, he missed some, but he yeah, was throwing nasty. some bricks up there. Like he he was throwing some bricks, but he hit some big shots in that first quarter. In first quarter, I'm just I'm just talking about the first quarter. Derek White hit some shots to like help them with the lead because it it low-key was going back and forth for the first seven minutes. People forgetting about that. The first seven mm-hmm. minutes was competitive. Yeah. It was. And Kent Porzingis just. I, when I seen Kyrie hit that tough um, fadeaway over, um, I can't remember who it was. It was two Celtics, though. Midi. When, the midi? Yeah. Yeah. When okay, he hit yeah. that, I thought, I was like, oh, man. Kyrie hitting these shots, it's about to be a long night. When Luca hit that, no it should have. Luca should have hit Luka that N1. Luka, that should have been an N1. Yeah. I was like, okay, they came to play. I was like, Luka okay, hit yeah, that. This, this was. Yeah, that should have been a tough and one on Tatum. Now it was like three people on him, and he just three, yeah, three dudes. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I man, when he got the layup off, I was like, he was still in the air. I didn't, I thought he already had landed. I'm like, what? How you get that off still? He took too many threes. He took 12 threes, bro. He got to post up sometimes. Sometimes forget the pick and roll. Get a guard on you and just post him up. He, I could tell how he was playing. He had watched too much film on Tatum because he was playing like him. <laughs> he was, bro, it seemed like he took three step backs a quarter. I promise it felt like he took three step backs a quarter. <laughs> and yeah. when he got stood up by Hauser, I was absolutely, I damn near fell out my damn seat. When I seen him get on um, the ball poked so easily by Brown, I said, this don't look, no. Nah. Luca don't he don't get peeled that easy. I don't but know. the only was, thing is, yeah. go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I was saying him and Kyrie were too loose with the ball. Kyrie dribbling off his shoe, and it, it it just they didn't take care of the ball the way they should have against. And the Celtics didn't either necessarily. But when you have thirty, you passes yeah. for them. Yeah, let's talk about Kyrie. Six for nineteen, zero and eleven against the Celtics. In his last eleven playoff games against the Hill, um, but the shooting splits ain't bad. He been twenty five, I mean twenty two five and four, forty seven from the field, thirty seven from three. So he ain't been just terrible. But last night he was terrible, and people love Kyrie, so ain't nobody gonna say nothing. But he left a lot out there. He hit some tough shots, and he crossed up Al Horford on the baseline. Woo wee, but. Overall, bro, that dude six for nineteen is just that's not going to be you can't you can't you can't if you the co star you can't leave your main man out there by itself to fight. You just can't yeah. do that. No. And it was like PJ Washington, he can't hit a three to save his life, but he played with some nuts, man. Oh, I'm yeah. just gonna say that. Like, they bro, been, man, y'all was yeah. down 30 points. He made a tough layup, he ran down the court flex. I'm like, I mean, <laughs> hey. I can't be mad. At him. He the only one showing he, he, he helped it. He did it again. He helped us bring the, that that run because we made the run in the yeah, third that's... quarter. His energy, yeah. it just be somebody got to drop. They they you know, and he do it every time. Like he never give up. He got a never give up type of mentality. I, mean, he, I respect he came, him. The, he came from the Hornets. He said, "I'm not going back." <laughs> I'm in the finals. Yeah. This, is the fir- this is the first year I'm playing actual meaningful ba- Come on, meaningful man. ball. I've been waiting yeah. on this. I, it's I not saying much, but he was the second best married. Yeah, it's I, not saying that, much, but he was the second best married. I don't know why Gaff, but why Gaff, you came from the Wizards. You want to go back? I just don't I think he's as. 
I just don't think <laughs> I just don't think Gafford just I just don't think he all that, bro. No offense. Like I, I'm no, wrong I, about I, it. PJ is he, better. I mean, his like? game is more limited though. He's just a, he's out there specifically like for rebounding, um, paint yeah, defense. Me. I'm saying I'm saying though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like he can't do it because PJ can actually put the ball on the ground and do some stuff like Gaffer can't do that. Yeah. So his game is way more limited. In the like, if he the stuff he can impact in, he wasn't doing that game. Like you said, he only had three rebounds. Um, I'm mm-hmm. not really sure how many blocks he had. Um, and, and, and Boston's kind of and Boston's kind of having their way. In the he game. had no block, so he, where he could impact the game, he just he didn't he didn't impact it. He didn't have no influence that game. So Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford was a combined ten points in a negative twenty five, and they both they combined for eight rebounds as well. So, uh. The center position that was supposed to be the third star combined, they didn't do their job. I think Derrick Jones Jr., he could be sat down. Uh, I like the big lineup that we went to when it was Cleaver, mm-hmm. PJ, and uh, Lively. Even though Lively didn't have the greatest game, you just can't get them switches that KP wanted. And I think that really uh, affected them in the second half because now you can't get those small switches. Now, if you got Kyrie, Luka, PJ, Cleaver, and Lively. The only person that you want switched on you is Kyrie, and it's four people on the court that's going to prevent that from happening. Even when they Lucas switched on KP, KP just kind of couldn't do what he wanted against Lucas. Lucas so damn strong. He just kind of pushed him off his spot. So I think with the KP lineups, you got to put that double big lineup out there, and you probably just don't have to tell Josh Green and uh, Derrick Jones Jr. say, that, nope. I'm I'm glad J- Jason Kidd is a good coach. I can say that because as soon as I seen that that adjustment, he damn near made it. As soon as I seen it, so <laughs> uh, the only problem with that this time was Derek Lively got in foul trouble trouble because rest calling that bull crap. So that was a terrible foul call. Jalen yeah. Brown just literally just was running into him, bro. Lo- just literally lunged into him. I mean, I don't think that's a foul when you just lunge into somebody. You initiate the contact, so. Um, in that regard, that lineup works better when Derek Lively isn't in foul trouble because then we don't have to go away from him so quickly. Uh, but that, in, in my opinion, I'd agree that was the most effective lineup. That was the best lineup. And for that lineup to be even better, uh, Kyrie just needs to hit sh- shots. Got to hit shots. Gotta there hit was shot. a time when we were coming back uh, on that run. We had two travels and missed wide open threes that gave the Celtics the game back. Man, when stuff like, like that happens. You, you, you. I don't know. I don't know. Like you can't come back from that. So, can we just say it? Kyrie was bad. He low key was terrible, man. He was dribbling off his foot. Did you see that corner three he shot? <laughs> Hit the uh, like, uh, side of the backboard. Yeah, it's just. Say, bro, people got to understand, dudes be human. Him going back to Boston in a finals when he was supposed to lead this Boston team to a finals. Because, like, people yeah, got to understand. Adrenaline was out of there. Yeah. People forgetting boy, that Kyrie was, was, was supposed to. Because who they have at first? They had Isaiah Thomas. And they like, oh, we trading in Isaiah Thomas for Kyrie? This team should be whoop de whoop. And he yeah. didn't live up to expectations as a number one. Let's just keep it a buck. He didn't. Boston is a tough crowd. Him going to play in Boston, this was a big deal. And they you know, he just had one thing. Game. It was. Did y'all hear when Doris Burke said um, about the booze? He was. They was like, she was like, I expected more booze. I was like, wait, what? You ex- <laughs> that is yeah. crazy. You expected more hate? <laughs> yeah, it's Boston. We everybody. Come on, were, we gotta quit. Like they that, was a little man. bit more Boston respectful racism. than I. Th- I I ain't gonna lie. When she said, "I was like, now that I think of it, they was a little bit more respectful than I thought they was gonna be." It's hard to hate Kyrie, especially right now. Mm-hmm. And, and my th- everybody loves Kyrie right now. He played terrible though. That boy oh, played. Yeah. <laughs> what 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 they say in Boondocks? He said he sure can dribble, but he shoots like <laughs> oh, that boy was Riley. shooting. <laughs> yeah, bro. But I think he go bounce back. He he a tough guy mentally. Uh, they had more blocks. Celtics had more blocks 
than the Mavericks had a sis. I feel like that's crazy. Yeah, they just shut down the paint for a minute there. Um, can we talk about how Tatum's a front runner though? How is he front running? I talk Same, about Tatum. Bro. It's about four dudes out there better than him, bro. On his own team, dog. But what was he, he was doing out there front running? You just wanted to use that word. Like he didn't. He wasn't out there talking <laughs> no noise. He wasn't trying to take advantage when they was up big. He was. He was still playing. Yes, he was. Ball. No, Ray. Not, when they went uh, up big, he still yeah, was taking step back. Yeah. Stop it. When they were up big, that he was trying he to get some more stats. He was doing it at the beginning. He was trying of the game. to. Ray. He was trying to get. Ray. He was trying to get them numbers when they was up big. Yeah, especially towards the end of that game. Yes, yeah, he was, bro. Ray, first of it's all, ball, we not for the hold on. The rebound, we up now, and I'm, 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 what? That's crazy. No, you know, I said the rebounding was cool, but the assist that shit was not that great when he out them damn turnovers. He just was throwing the ball out of bounds a lot. In the I promise you, he, he was, was throwing the. Be- <laughs> go ahead. He be dr- he be running in that lane and he just throw it out and hope one of them dudes are in their spot. They got little spots where they find. He just throw it out there and hope they there. I ain't gonna lie, a lot of them, a lot of he could have had way more assists. They wasn't missing easy bunnies because he he dimed Drew Holiday up one time, missed the easy layup. He dimed um what's it called Przingis up that time. He missed that layup. He dimed Derek White on the three. He missed like he was he was. Throwing some dimes, he just they just wasn't finishing. He could have easily had ten assists that game, though. So and he, in some so of those passes, okay, let's just say he would had ten assists and six turnovers. Some of those turnovers, some of those turnovers from the passes, like that's the thing. Like every like every turnover you have, not just him, just players in general, is not always your fault. But you're going to be credited for that turnover. No, that don't mean you just no, out there just turning the ball over. That's you fair, know but. you know we know the nuances. A lot of times he just threw the ball out of bounds. I guess. I'm so he was the what best Celtic? Go ahead, Chris. He was the – I still say he was the third, maybe fourth best Celtic. Probably third. Um, no. He did play – He didn't he, play better he, than Drew. He did well defensively. Like, he did he well. Holiday, though. He did well defensively. Jason. He did well. Why couldn't the Mavericks get their lives? Because Jason Tatum was lurking in the – covering the role, man. He was lurking in the paint. He was covering that guy. That was Porzingis, too. They both did a good job. He did, too. I feel like Drew Holiday was better than him on defense. Porzingis was better than him on offense. Tatum was better than him on the boards. Tatum had a whole different role on defense than Drew Holiday did. Like, what Like what are we talking about? They had, Drew, they Tatum. had Jason Tatum out there guarding Gafford in the big sometime. Yeah. I don't think you understand how versatile he is. Gafford 16. But J- Jason Tatum, that's bro, the Jason point. Tatum could have went out there and go out at the same players that Drew did, and just as good if he wanted to. But he, they said, no, we want you on the big. Right. So did you did make it Jason like Tatum? Tatum oh, he did he play, play better than Drew Holiday or not? Dude, that's the reason why the Mavericks couldn't get their lives. Didn't say that two bigs had ten points combined. <laughs> Okay, so y'all gonna act like Porzingis wasn't one of them dudes protecting the rim and protecting the lob too? Uh, like, bro, <laughs> Porzingis had three points. Trying to change them, you gonna bring up somebody else? Also, I mean, Porzingis and Jalen Brown had three points. That's like saying, apiece. okay, did good defensively. Derek White, hey, and no, Brown hold on. Also out I'm there. not saying Tatum play like trash, but you can argue he was the fourth best player on his team yesterday. I'm talking about sp- uh, specifically right now defense. You said having Przingis in the paint helped Tatum. You said that, right? You said do what? What I say? What you say? I said. You said Przingis having Przingis in the paint helped Tatum on defense, right? Yeah. That's a lazy argument. We can, we can also say Drew Holiday had Derek White and Jalen Brown also as wing defenders. So that that you just trying to diminish what one guy did defensively. Just get like, bro, Tatum wasn't great offensively, but on defense, he was holding his own against everybody he was matched up against. Okay. Tatum played. Two things like can be true. Super... Name it, name it, like. He put, go ahead, Chris. Finish that. Little, little, go on, finish that. Go on, finish it. Now, this thing is mean to be no super slider. I mean, he played like a superstar role player, very <laughs> good in that role. And I'm not gonna try to, that. Don't mean he wasn't the third best Celtic, in my opinion. I think he had no, a great I'm not, game. 
I'm not I'm not even I'm not even arguing the ranking that y'all got. I was just saying when he said that Drew was better on defense, I was just like, I mean, how can you really just say who was I, better in that they I don't, so yeah, good. I don't okay, so okay good I'll take that a, back. They were so good as a team defensively, it's hard to just point yeah. out who was actually exact, the yes. best defensively. Yes, that's true. That's the, I agree with that, Ray. You're right. I I give you that. I, I just feel like Drew Holiday had some very underlooked impactful moments on both ends. The one I, thing, I just feel the, the one thing I one thing I can say about um and some people go you know we in a, we in a whole different era of basketball like a mentality of basketball like how people talk about basketball now but I like the fact that Tatum game has matured enough to the point where if your shot not going do something else great. He led the team in rebounding. He was still facilitating. He, I mean, he's like I said, he was still taking some step back shots down the. Uh, at that point, I think he was just trying to. He was just trying to add some points on, but he was still doing everything. He was still making <laughs> smart plays. He was still out rebounding, and he was still defending well. See this. See this was where we get kind of lost with the Jason Tatum talk. I don't think he ever plays bad. He don't have bad games because he just has he bad does so many time. things. Yes. But I'm saying it's a damn good luxury for him to be able to be the third or fourth best player. Listen to what we're saying. You a top 10 player, and at any given game, you can be the third or fourth best player on your team. How many top 10 players can be can do that? I'm saying we can acknowledge him as a player, being so well-rounded to where he can let his teammates do uh, the bulk of the work offensively, and he just fill in the gaps. And we can also the, say, say, man, your team is this is the first year where you can really say that. We, you can say he didn't had a good team since he came to the league. This is the first year where he can actually, with you, the statement you just made, this is the first year that's ever been an actual argument. But in the, them other times, he didn't get it done, bro. <laughs> so but it's I'm like, saying, if he. Name, I'm saying, I get, name I get me a time saying. in the past, though, where if he was the third option, you were still confident they was going to win the game. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. No, no. But like I said, I feel like Jalen Brown was the best player in the game just because how he impacted on both ends, especially in that second half when the Mavericks was making that run. I feel like Jay, the, the thing about this is Jalen Brown, I, I think we don't get to see him because he's the second option to Jason Tatum. But I think people would universally say if he was on a different team, he'd be a top 15 player. I think he damn, you could damn near say he's just as good as a Donovan Mitchell or Devin Booker. Donovan Mitchell. Man. If it was Devin I mean, okay, I, 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 I guess. And okay. it was of equal stature to a Devin Booker team. Jalen Brown okay. his own team, and I, it was equal stature to a Devin Booker team. Devin Booker don't want the problems, bro. I'm just gonna keep <laughs> bro. Jalen Brown is a two-way guy, bro. It's not a lot of shooting guards that want that. I'm just saying. Him, probably Ant. Ant probably the only one that can go mano y mano for Jalen Brown athletically and as a two way guy. That's all I'm, I'm gonna say. When he who did he dunk on? Oh my lord, who was that? Was that Gafford? Uh, I think that was Gafford. Uh, it was multiple people. It was more than one person. It, it was <laughs> yeah. It, it wasn't just one they, person. I think Derrick Jones <laughs> Jr. was under there. I think. It's yeah, the it way wasn't. he rose up. I didn't expect him to just like I thought he was gonna do like a, a a little like I barely got my hand to the rim type of dunk. That dude, <laughs> he turned up yeah. supposed to be a, just a, bar- a barely rim graze to like, bro. I'm trying to bring the whole goal down. And Ray, he remember cried. we talked about this too. Uh, the the last finals they was in, how he can just be a different type of athlete. Like you see it pop now. Like oh no, nah, he just. He's a different guy out there. He did it against the Warriors. He just ain't had no help. We were just like, man, Jalen Brown. Well, Andrew Wiggins was out there too, but then was the two. Remember, just they just stood out athletically, and it was just like, man, these are the two best athletes on the court. Andrew Wiggins was just bigger. But I, I seen a lot of that in this game, to where it's just like Jalen Brown is the best athlete amongst the athletes in this game. It, his block on Derrick Jones Jr.? My lord, <laughs> Derrick Jones Jr. is not no bro. Derrick Jones Jr. is a top 10 athlete, top 15 athlete in the league. Jalen Brown, man, 
it, it, it's just I he's skilled and caught up with his athleticism and Jalen Brown. Say, man, he could be the finals MVP. I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm just gonna put it out there. If the Celtics win the chip, Jalen Brown MVP, bro. Anything I mean, else? It depends depend I mean, on how the re- how the how the rest of the series goes. Game I, one. I know it's just game one, but I'm saying I I think he don't. You know, it gets to a time or point in a in a player's game, especially he doesn't. He's he's a late bloomer. I think he done fully found his game to where he's a hundred percent comfortable. He understands how to use his skills, when to use his skills, and how to blend it with his athleticism and motor. I think that's what I've I've noticed out of uh, Jalen Brown, just even in the the conference finals, like. I'm just saying, I think he's been the best Celtic the last two round, the, in the last round and in this first game. Any other observations before we get to predictions for game two? And game for them. Oh, Chris, yo, I don't know what happened to you, Mike. I don't like being no, uh, you know that move the ring. <laughs> But you, you see anything else, Ray? Mm. Tatum just didn't play like a top ten player, so that's just how I feel. <laughs> it's one game. It's one game. Tatum ain't play like no top ten player. I'll give Boston credit; they did what they were supposed to do. They came and they they beat the Mavericks down. They I hit mean, three. I, I definitely I, I expected Tatum. A different side of Tatum, especially coming from because even before the game, they had him mic'd up and he was talking about um, how it feel good to be back and he just he ready to like basically kind of um a, like a, a do over of the last time they was there. So I I Bro, expected a more aggressive Tatum. Would I be tripping if I said he's not a great athlete? Because it feel like he he his first step not great. It's it's good, and his athleticism is is good for his size. But it feel like he was getting that cor- he was turning that corner. But it was like something was missing. Like he couldn't elevate, or he couldn't. I, you it know, feel like, it feel like when he first came in the league, he was a little bit more explosive. I don't know what happened, but I don't know. He don't even try like. The attempts in the paint that Brown would take, yeah, Tatum will, Tatum will see that, and that's when he goes straight to okay, I'm gonna I'm facilitate now. Like I'm like, yeah. bro, like that. I was surprised he rolled up on it. Um, when um when they had when he got Kyrie switched on him again, and he did that. I said it was a nice move by Tatum, and he rolls up and dunked it. I thought he was gonna lay the ball up when he rolls up with two hands and dunked it like a big man. I'm like, <laughs> bro, why don't you do this more often? Like he rolls up with ease. I'm like, bro, ain't no way. Yeah. <laughs> ain't yeah. no way. I want to see him get more rim attempts because it feel like it feel like he don't think he got the athleticism to finish at times or something. I don't know. Cause they just feel like he turned that like corner, he, I get feel to like the rim, to play just... safe at times so he like don't risk injury or something. I'm like, bro, you playing like that? It's gonna. I mean, I'm not trying to speak this into existence, but sometimes trying to play too safe. From not getting injured can like increase your injury risk. Okay, I just that's thought, how it I, thought like I was tripping. Do be kind of, it, it do seem like sometimes he's been trying to play safe too much. Cause I, I feel like it was some times where, it's, say, man, yeah, if they were Jalen Brown or Ant, they trying to punch because he he got <laughs> past Luca a lot. So it just was, I don't it know. The finishing gonna be past, some watch. It was like he got past Lively and laid the ball up. I'm like, bro. If you yeah, land up the center, yeah. you need to like come on, man. Yeah, you gotta you gotta keep on you gotta stay aggressive getting to the paint. Cause I, I feel like they they man. It's like and I don't make sure it, you know when you're in high school and you're trying to put it together your highlight film to send off the colleges and stuff. Like it's like he <laughs> it, my game's not gonna feel complete if I don't got highlight plays. And I'm like, bro, we don't care about them turnaround fadeaways, we don't care about them <laughs> step back threes, like this the finals. We just trying to win. Oh. <laughs> Man, I'm a lot, a lot of like uh, Derek Lively. If he wasn't in foul trouble, I think he holds up well against. T- I think he holds up well on the perimeter on Tatum as well. So I think it, 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 I think it's. It, I'm not. I mean, he. 
I think the future is very bright for that young man. And I'm not gonna uh, praise the losers because we did lose this game, but I see I see a couple DPOYs in my man's future. I think Derek Lively is the most advanced center I've ever seen as a rookie in terms of understanding the game, understanding mm-hmm. his role, not getting outside of himself and doing exactly what the team needs of him. Because mm-hmm. I think he's an actual defensive anchor. He can actually rebound, block shots, and he can rim run. And then he can pass out the short roll. I think that's his most underrated uh, skill yes. in the game. Because I was yeah. listening to uh, Gills Arena, and they was talking about how they should guard Luka and force Lively to make a play. I'm like, bro, if y'all not been paying attention, I would rather – I would – see, I, I, but I'm a Mavericks fan, so I wouldn't really want this to happen, but I will force Derrick Jones Jr. to make a play. If I was if I was going against the Mavericks, I want Derrick Jones Jr. to be making the play because I feel like he's so the you're saying them layup too attempting. Yeah, that, <laughs> that worked well. That worked well for the Celtics. That's exactly I was told, a part of their I game plan. Before, I told y'all in that Timberwolves series, <laughs> I don't like when he drives them. I to, I said he don't, I, he don't know how athletic he is, so he gonna go with a crazy layup. I'm like man, he tried to punch it one time against the Mar- against the uh, Celtics, but. That boy matumboed him. That boy, that boy Jalen Brown matumboed him. Hey, they were blocking shots now. They had more blocks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Had a mm-hmm. Porzingis block on Josh Green was <laughs> Josh Green. I don't even know why he tried to do that though. But that's still my boy. Yeah, I think Josh Green need more play. Why he did that. No, 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 no. See, that's the thing. Josh Green and uh, Derrick Jones Jr. Damn near null and void if KP out there. So you got to go bigger. Found some shit I love to do so I can look comfortable. Searching for a peace of mind. Need that when it's time to rhyme. Perfect in every line. Any chance I get. And I know it takes time, but I will never quit. 